Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at different types of missile guidances. Now this is kind of an interesting video because there's actually a bunch of different types of guidance systems model within command, and we're going to take a look at primarily the airborne versions. Uh, keep in mind there is one other version that we will not be seeing today, which is the command guided weapon. There were some uh, actually air to air weapons that were command guided, particularly back in the 50s. But a lot of these weapons are pretty much out of service at this point, but it's, it's just worth mentioning. There's also what they call beam following weapons as well, which were also used in airborne platforms, but they're a little bit more difficult to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got today. So right now I've got a pretty straightforward scenario where I'm sitting here right basically in the northern part of the Caribbean. I've got myself an F-14D equipped with AIM-54s, which are going to be my active radar homing weapons. I have my semi-active radar homing weapons. So I've got my old school uh, F-16A here with the AIM-7s. I have my infrared homing weapons, which uh, you're going to discover some interesting consequences to. And of course, we also have the cooperative engagement weapons, which are, to uh, say the least, almost cheap. So on the other side, of course, uh, we've taken ourselves this handy-dandy Airbus A330. This is MRTT. This is actually an in airborne tanker. The reason I pulled this one out is so that you can kind of see just how effective these weapons are. So let's start with the simplest. So the infrared homing system is uh, relatively straightforward. It basically means that the weapon that you're using has some kind of CCD or some kind of camera on the front that basically senses uh, extreme heat, which would usually be from the engines of an aircraft. Or, of course, if your aircraft is moving through the air fast enough, it will show up against especially a nice and cold sky. Inside of command, the sensitivity of these sensors is modeled based on the temperature and more importantly, the visibility to the target. So let's go ahead and uh, create my little engagement here real quick, just to demonstrate what this is capable of. There's uh, In the old days, uh, when you had these infrared homing weapons, you basically had them divided between the infrared homing weapons, which had the capability of being able to actually home in on a weapon, uh, I should say an aircraft, from the behind. And then later on, you got homing weapons that could actually be all aspect. The AIM-9, which is a pretty typical dogfighting missile, is an all-aspect weapon. Now, if you go to the older versions of the Sidewinder, let's go to the AIM-9B, for example, 1957, this was a rear aspect weapon. That means the weapon only works if you shoot at the back quarter of a particular target. Now, if I pop up to the, uh, let's go all the way up to the nine, AIM-9X here, you'll notice when I come down here under uh, valid targets as well as properties, it says that it is a capable of doing this. Again, it's anti-air dogfight, high off bore sight. This weapon can actually shoot at an angle off of the rail. Now, the earlier versions, like I'll go grab a P5 real quick, you'll notice it is still an all aspect weapon. However, it is still a terminal guidance. So let's see what this means. So we have our aircraft. Again, this is an all aspect, which means we can engage at any point as long as we are pointing at the target and the target itself is giving off enough heat for us to take a shot at. Of course, if it was going full afterburner and we were chasing it, it would be very easy to target it. But for us, again, we're just a fairly large aircraft here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my airplane, lock on, I'll give it a pair of these. Now, one of the neat, woo, I think I gave them, oh, apparently I have five of these allocated. I just wanna use two. Now, one of the nice things about these weapons is they're fire and forget. As soon as they leave the rail, I can immediately turn my F-16 and get the the heck out of here. As a matter of fact, I could have engaged this entire process without engaging the radar, which is exactly what I did. The radar on my F-16 here never actually got turned on. So this makes it an amazing ambush weapon. Of course, the infrared sensor is uh, fairly, well, not fairly not sensitive. It is very sensitive, but the problem is, is uh, the atmosphere starts to get in the way, which means there are very few long range um, infrared homing weapons. So there is, uh, the Russians have something called the R-27T, and there's actually an ET version which is basically an infrared homing missile with a range of like 30 to 40 kilometers, well, nautical miles, I should say, which is pretty impressive at the same time as it's like, does that actually work? Now let's take a look what goes wrong. So I'm going to grab my infrared homing aircraft again and send him on his way. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip on the weather. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself, uh, that looks pretty good. Let's see here. Solid cloud cover, seven to 36,000 feet. Delightful. Now, of course, I have myself a Hawkeye up here to help out a little bit. So go ahead and flip on the Hawkeye real quick. Yeah, we'll switch back to the other team. Go ahead and grab this aircraft. And I'm going to order it to go ahead and descend down to 25,000 feet, which is right into the icing zone of this pretty serious looking cloud here. All right, so our F-16 is now going to go ahead cruising along here. Everybody else is kind of orbiting. Our AWACS had no difficulty acquiring this target, which shows we can see starting to descend. So I'm going to go ahead and get my F-16, buddy. We're going to go ahead and pass. I'm going to come swing around like this real quickly. Nice and aggressive turn there. We're gonna pull on the Gs. This is an F-16A. These things have no difficulty pulling Gs. We're gonna come sneaking up on this guy right on his hind quarter. We're gonna go ahead and lock on. And I can't fire. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and fire four of these at this guy. Um, um, hey buddy, you did intend on in firing your missiles, right? Um, sir, excuse me, sir. 
you you are going to shoot at that, right? <laughs> Notice the F-16 can do nothing to fire those missiles because those infrared missiles are visual, which means you can't actually see through this thick cloud cover. As a matter of fact, if I back them up and say, why don't you go down to uh, 25,000 feet then and go ahead and flip on your fire control radar. Maybe that'll work a little bit better. Notice, we still are completely incapable of firing this weapon at that target because that target is in cloud cover, making it like literally impossible to engage. Now, theoretically, you may be able to get close enough that you can go ahead and fire a weapon like this and go ahead and hit it now. But notice, we still cannot fire that weapon at this time. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the other, this time the radar-guided weapons, which won't have that pesky limitation as far as bad weather goes. The first type we're going to take a look at is called SARH, that is semi-active radar homing. The way this works is simply you take your radar on the airplane, you point it at the target, illuminate it as strong as you can, and then fire a missile, and that missile is designed to basically track the strongest source of illumination of that radar energy. There's other uh, mechanical components to that as well. But we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So now the greatest advantage to this particular type of weapon is as long as you can point the radar at the target that you're interested in engaging, the missile should lock onto it. And one of the neat things about it is that the um, closer the missile gets to the target, the more reliable of an engagement you'll have. So you can see we've got ourselves a target. We're going to go ahead and lock on. I'll go ahead and fire a pair of these. These are AIM-7s. I hate these things. And we fire both of these weapons. Now here's where it's going to get tricky. Our F-16 has to keep its radar pointed at the target during the entire cruise of these weapons. If for some reason there was uh, some kind of emergency, maybe we needed to dodge out of the way, and I did something like this, these missiles would both go blind instantly, and they'd actually lose track of the target. Now, if I order my F-16 to come swinging back around again and re-illuminate the target, the target will be able to be reacquired and actually engaged directly. So we'll go ahead and let these things sneak up here and kind of catch this guy. Now, if he was hiding in that deep cloud, it would not matter. He'd be uh, pretty screwed either way. So this is a classic technique, but like I said, it requires us to continue traveling towards the target in order to successfully engage it. So those particular types of missiles are pretty much out. Uh, they do exist in some places throughout the world still. Uh, the R-27R, for example, and the, the ER version as well are pretty common, but generally most countries have switched to our next style weapon. Our next style weapon is going to be the Active Radar Homing Missile. Now this one is an amazing, amazing system. Basically, the missile itself is equipped with its own onboard radar that flips on at an appropriate time during the engagement. So now one of the earlier versions of this, of course, was uh, like the Genie missile, for example, and a lot of SAMs use this method. But the uh, missile I always think of when I think of active radar homing is usually going to be the F-14's uh, AIM-54 Phoenix, which has a staggeringly long range. And now we'll go ahead and now reacquire that target and just kind of demonstrate what we can do here. So we've got this target pretty darn distance away. I'm just going to click on it, go ahead and fire a pair of these. It takes uh, just a few moments for them to actually acquire a solid lock. And the way that this particular missile works is that long range, when they're fired, they actually get updates to where they should launch themselves from the launching platform. This means that these missiles that are cruising here are basically constantly being told turn right a little bit, turn left a little bit, until they get into range where they can turn on their own active radars and then proceed to the target directly. So I'm going to go ahead and let that cruise for just a moment. Now the neat thing here is um, I have to keep pointing at the target at all time until these weapons activate their own onboard radars. Like I said, if I was at very, very short range, I could fire this mad dog and basically fire immediately active radar. As you can see, this missile has now flipped on its own radar, acquired the target, and is now setting itself up for an engagement. The one directly behind it is going to do that. Now, because they've turned on their own radars, I can now pull myself out of the engagement like this, and you can actually watch the weapons continually guide themselves all the way to the target. These are extremely common, with the most common one that most people think of being the AIM-120. So now, if you thought those particular guidance systems were pretty cool, uh, wait do you see the next one. Our final kind of guidance that we're going to take a look at with air-to-air -air weapons is cooperative engagements. Now, these weapons have the ability to be launched from an airplane and then guided to the target by another platform. So in this case, I'm actually going to grab my Hawkeye. Go ahead and flip its radar on here so we can reacquire this target. Down here, I have myself an F-35. This is equipped with the AIM-120D model. The D model, if you actually take a look at its properties real quick, you'll notice that it has the capability to go ahead and engage itself and be guided to targets. Basically, whoever has their particular frequency for it. Like you can see lock on after launch, CC capable. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of head in this direction. I see my target over there, pretty good distance away. I'm gonna get a little bit closer so I can get a more guaranteed shot here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order up two AMRAMs here. One, two, we're gonna fire both of them. Notice my radar never got turned on. 
Now, you're probably saying, well, that doesn't make sense. He needs to turn his radar on to guide those weapons. As a matter of fact, no, he does not. So as soon as both of these weapons have left the rail, wait for the other one. I'm actually going to turn my aircraft away. Now, he turned on his radar at the last second there, but he actually doesn't need to do that. Let me go ahead and pull myself out of the way here. Now, the reason he doesn't need to do that is because my Hawkeye is now guiding these weapons all the way down to the target. So if I were to kind of speed up time a little bit here, these missiles are constantly getting updates, not from the shooting platform, but from the actual platform that's actually guiding these at this time. As a matter of fact, if you want to see more aggressive use of this technology, I'll let those missiles come through. Let's set it up so that the F-35 doesn't even have a radar. And say goodbye to that extremely expensive, extremely effective radar. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, let's go ahead and get our handy dandy Hawkeye here. Let's get our CEC platform. And I'll just demonstrate just how amazing this technology is. So my F-35 now has no radar. So I'm going to go ahead and lock onto my target again. Notice it allows me to fire. I'm just going to double click like that. Both missiles leave the rail. I turn my F-35 away and he goes home. These weapons are now being guided towards the target by that Hawkeye radar. Not every system, by the way, has the capability of talking to these missiles. You need to make sure that you do have the appropriate communications data link. That's the AIM-120 data link to make sure you have the ability to actually talk to them. Otherwise, you will not be able to do this kind of a shot. So again, this is command guidance. I know I was saying they don't do that anymore, but I guess they kind of do. So now we switch over to active radar homing once we get a little bit closer to the target. And you can see that it sets up an amazing situation where we can basically do a cheap shot like this. Now you can go a little bit further with this and now let me show you what I mean. All right so what I've set up here is I have a pair of F-35s. I have one over here chilling and I've got another one over here that you probably saw a little bit earlier on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use this F-35 to launch missiles that this F-35 guides to the target. So you can already see just how uh, not fair this is. So I'm going to go ahead and get into range here. I'm going to have him go flip on his radar, which is usually more than enough to cause a target like this to start panicking. But then I'm going to use this F-35 to go ahead and fire the weapons. So I'm going to go ahead and fire a couple here. It should just take a couple. And we'll go ahead and order him to get the heck out of there. I'm actually going to order this one to slow down. Notice he flipped his radar on. I'm going to go flip him out of the way so he disables his own radar. He doesn't need it right now, but I'm going to slow this one down so he has enough time. So now this F-35 is punching out, but this F-35 over here on the right is actually ordering the weapons exactly where they need to go. So you can see, rip, surprise, boom. So that is such a, uh, that is so mean of an engagement. All right, hopefully this video has helped you well, as far as showing you the different types of guidance types of uh, different sort of air-to-air -air weapons. You know, we took a look at the infrared, which are great until, uh, of course, you know, you're in a cloud or something like that. We looked at the ARH, which is wonderful as long as you can reliably get a lock that holds long enough to be able to guide it to where the active radar kicks in. We took a look at SARH, which is the really old school where basically you point a giant flashlight on it and anything that reflects the flashlight gets a missile launched at it. And of course, we also took out the cooperative weapons, which are actually multifunction weapons. Enjoy.